Now, thank you, Steve, and thank you to all of you for um, joining us this afternoon. I really appreciate the, the time and the opportunity. I've been thinking a lot about Disrupt CRE since Stephen and I talked about a month ago and developed this opportunity. And you know, what does it mean to disrupt commercial real estate? I have a lot of ideas on the, the subject of commercial real estate and real estate te technology. It's been dear and near to my heart for many years. And, but I question and think about and had struggle a little bit with the idea of disruption of the space. We look at, I started to think about it, I looked up the definition of disruption, and it's to interrupt by causing a disturbance or a problem or drastically altering or destroying a structure. And I think we need to think beyond disruption, and Brandon, you used the word as well, to transformation. I think the, real, the concept is destruction in a positive way and moving the industry forward and taking commercial real estate from its historic parochial roots to, to becoming a technology-driven efficient global marketplace. And I believe that technology companies want to do and need to do is to work with the industry to make it dramatically better. Concepts that have tried to destroy the market in the past have generally failed, while those that have worked with the industry and embraced the, the structure of the industry have succeeded, as Brandon talked about, some of the ones that have um, become market leaders that were born many years ago. There's a tremendous opportunity to drive greater uh, efficiency and liquidity in the market, and it is up to the industry, the, the brokers and the, the people in the room that are driving the marketplace to take leadership and to adopt and adapt to transform the marketplace before it is disrupted and we're put out of business. There's a real threat of that if we don't work well and embrace the technology that's being developed by great companies like Hightower. So again, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. In the brief time that we have together today, I'd like to share a little bit about the past where the commercial industry was when I started in the early 1980s to where it is now, and some ideas of, of where it's headed in the future. I think now is a special moment in the industry with a lot of interesting factors coming together that really create an opportunity for the industry to be disrupted for the better. And I believe that in the next five years, we're gonna see more changes and more adoption of technology and more efficiency in the market and uh, more dramatic change than we've seen in the last 50 years. So. Remember, I went to school here at, at BU, and a uh, long time ago, I was finishing uh, in 1984, I leaving, uh, leaving school, walking down Commonwealth Avenue, for those of you who are local here, uh, probably a day not unlike today, maybe a lot colder, but uh, leaving a finance class and just thinking about why can't real estate trade like a stock or a bond? Why is the market so inefficient? And as I began my career, at what was then New America Network and later became NAI Global, I realized how fragmented and local the market was and how it was really resource constrained at that time and how it lacked consistency of process and systems. It was clear that transactions were very complex and unique. Ownership structures were different and every transaction clients had different demands and every lease or property was different. But when I thought about it, companies were like that as well. Each company was unique, yet a company could be underwritten, its stock could be traded, and its bonds could be traded in a liquid real estate, uh, liquid uh, financial market. At that time, it was a much different landscape than it is today. There really were three companies that had national brands. It was Caldwell Banker, which was then a commercial and residential firm. It was owned by Sears, which everyone jokingly talked about, selling everything from socks to stocks, as they owned Dean Witter as well. Uh, Grubb and Ellis, which was on a national expansion program, and Cushman and Wakefield, which was opening offices across the country. It was clear that the industry was at the early stages of a dramatic shift in what it was, and it was moving from a local to a national and ultimately to a global marketplace. And it was beginning the period of consolidation and change. And as our fledgling brokerage network grew at NAI, we tried to be change agents or disruptors of that era. I remember it was, um, probably 1985 or 86, and it was here in Boston. We uh, had heard of this great new technology that had been developed and recommended that our organization, we had about 100 offices across the country at that time, adopt it. It was called a fax machine. And we, um, we suggested that every office adopt and implement a fax machine. And it led to a near revolution. There were chairs flying and pencils and everything was chaotic in the, the boardroom as we debated this 
really, really challenging thought of you know, the, um, the few hundred dollar investment and the actual demand that you change behavior and, and require me to communicate. But what happened was the, uh, the board decided, yep, we'll put the fax machines in. And what they realized was they could actually communicate better. They could actually do business better. And it was an efficiency that uh, helped them and helped us become more competitive by communicating more effectively. So we continued to forge ahead on technology and started with mini computers that generated reams of paper and listing reports and property inventory reports and mailed those packages out monthly to all of the offices so they had information that they could access on a national scale. And then when uh, the PC became the, the new technology, we built and rebuilt our technology in DOS and then Windows and we had modems that were crashing all around us as we were uploading and downloading data and really trying to pioneer how we could get rid of all of this mailing of, of reports across the country and, and share information with uploading and downloading. And then it was uh, in the, I guess around 1987, 88, we developed uh, Realtrack, which was our proprietary transaction management system. And it allowed us to manage thousands of transactions which were running across our organization in real time, but uh, required a lot of phone calls and updates and reporting that uh, brokers, there were some brokers in the room, you're not always the most forthcoming with information when it comes to <laughs> reporting to, to clients, but we were able to get as much of it done as we could and, and able to, to progress from there. And in the early 90s, around 1993, there was this thing called the World Wide Web, which was just coming out, and we saw that we had this technology base that, you know, we could get rid of these uh, inefficient upload and downloads and move our technology to the web and quickly, uh, quickly, very quickly, as soon as we could, moved everything from Windows, dropped the, the process of the PC and moved everything to the, the web and had our online version of, of Realtrack. And what we were beginning to realize was that we could actually develop an interface and put it on our client's desktop so they could really order space from us. So it was the beginning of a process of this liquidity in the market that would allow someone to say, I need 10,000 square feet of space in Boston. It would trigger our brokers in Boston to go out and do a search, input information to come back and be on the client's desktop with a process management timeline and a reporting system that would allow everyone to know where all of the moving parts were in the, the transaction. And when the, the brokers thought about that originally, they thought, this looks like reporting. You're asking me to input information. But what a few of the more innovative brokers realized that they could actually win business. They could go to their customer and say, here's a more efficient way for us to execute business on your behalf and for you to have visibility across your portfolio on all the business that we're executing for you. Or if we're selling a property for you, a way to expose property to the market and have real time information about bids and have due diligence information available to the marketplace. So again, not shipping so much information, everyone had information in real time. And what we found was pretty profound. It was that the brokers loved technology when it could help them win business and make money. And they didn't care about technology so much when it was a part of a management infrastructure for them to report to so the managers knew what type of money they were making for them. So, Subtle but important aspect that I think of what, what Brandon's talking about and the other technology that's working is thinking about it. How is technology being put in place that's making the broker more efficient, the landlord's property more productive, and the industry more effective? It's really interesting as I look back and think about this that the, uh, you, you put on your chart sort of the legacy of the industry. It, it was, there were very few third-party companies developing technology through the history of the industry. Most of the, the best technology or the ones that uh, were working for the industry were built by the industry. So we built our own, CB built theirs, and Cushman built theirs, and some consortiums tried to build others. That didn't always work so well. But I used to think that the, um, and we, we felt like it so many times it was like pushing a rope in this industry to get adoption of technology. And we used to think that it was really the, the brokers that didn't want to adopt technology. And, and I think that was in part true. I think it is a stodgy industry and there's some demographic shift that is, shifts that have taken place over time. 
But I think also, to, to Brandon's point and to, to the way I think, the, the stuff wasn't very good. What was built and we were being asked to consume was first very expensive and it just wasn't great. And when things were great and they were priced right, they, they were adopted. And you look at what, what's happened on the residential side, you realize that you know, they're not so different. I mean, the residential brokers and commercial brokers, but it's a much bigger market. There's more of them and more money was put into technology, the development of it, and the scale of it allowed pricing to be more efficient so that there was greater adoption, faster adoption, and better uh, use of the technology to make that a more efficient market. And that, that market's changed more dramatically than the commercial side has. So I think we're really at a different place today than we were in the, all of the years that uh, we've all been in this business. First, the industry landscape has changed dramatically. What was a vast market of very local players that generally ate what they killed uh, and therefore couldn't afford to invest long term, really needed to think short term, has changed now to a service sector that is much better capitalized. It's dominated by some very large companies. Uh, this really reflects the transformation of our client base. So global real estate companies are service, servicing global corporate clients. Capital markets are driving the market. So the industry is now more of a Wall Street driven market than a Main Street driven market. And what used to be success through country club relationships, and while those relationships are still important, it's really given way to boardroom decisions and where these decisions are made much different than they were before. So now that real estate is an institutional asset class, driven by a securitized market and public companies, the professionalism of the industry needs to change to use the tools and resources to demonstrate accountability and responsibility and the, the expectations of these customers so that they're safe in their jobs and their decisions to hire you. The clients are demanding better, cheaper, faster, which is requiring the service providers to be more efficient and provide greater value. It's not just about getting a deal done, but it's running a process to get the best deal done. And so why is now the time to disrupt and transform the commercial real estate market? I think there's a number of reasons why this is an ideal time to change and why it's an ideal time for Stephen to have put this program together. And again, why I think that there'll be more change in the next five years than we've seen in the last 50. First, it's the demand of our customers. In other words, we don't have a choice as a real estate brokerage industry to change. Those that adopt technology will win more business and those that don't, won't. Clients need real-time data, they need faster execution, and they require quality assurance. You just can't do business the old-fashioned way anymore. Second, it's capitalization of the customer. What has been an industry of many small companies where the agents were more often than not the customer has become an industry dominated by large public companies and institutionally owned companies that have budgets and, budgets and patience to take advantage of great technology solutions. Third, it's the user. There's been a dramatic shift, a demographic shift in the industry from those that were less comfortable adopting and implementing to those that are demanding the latest and greatest tools and will be attracted to those companies that are providing those tools. And as the market continues to improve, those senior brokers that are now able to have the foresight to invest in themselves will begin to take advantage of these great tools to build their businesses even stronger than they've been in the past. Fourth, it's the power of technology. As I mentioned, our first big move in the 1980s was the fax machine. Now we have more power in the palm of our hands than I think the collective computing power of the industry at that time. Fifth, it's capital. Investment capital is now plentiful and anxious to enter this market to support great ideas and concepts to enter the commercial real estate market. But even with all of these stars aligning, it won't happen without great ideas and solutions solving real problems, enhancing industry performance and driving marketplace efficiencies, and all delivered at a compelling price. We're currently seeing a, great new, a number of great new solutions coming to the market from crowdsourcing to crowdfunding, from CRM to analytics, from property marketing to transaction management. And while many of these solutions are excellent pieces of a puzzle, brokers are still forced, or landlords or valuers or lenders are forced to make too many decisions to get all of the applications they need 
and they're required to stitch them together at the end of the day to work to really give them the type of total solution that they're looking for. So I think one of the biggest challenges and opportunities that we have as a market is not just to create great individual solutions, but figure out how do we make all of those solutions talk to each other? How do we collaborate? How do we share information? And how do we transform the concept? And again, Brandon mentioned it was the information's at our fingertips. The in information's controlled at each of your desktops. And if we can put information into systems and those systems begin to talk to each other, that information can be shared, mined, and enable each of you and the industry to be more efficient and more productive. There was a lot of talk in the past, uh, particularly in the dot-com era, about disintermediation. And embracing technology, I think, will keep the industry from being disintermediate, disintermediated. It's not going to disintermediate us. If we fail to act, if we fail to do things like we're doing today, to think about, act, implement, create, and take on new technology, then maybe somebody from the outside can really disrupt, come in and, and take our place. But I think the opportunity is ours in the room, those that are in the industry, to take advantage of great solutions build on the infrastructure that's existing with the industry and make it more efficient and uh, make it more effective and move forward. Yeah, you know, I, I think that many of you were around in the, the dot-com era and you saw these, these threats and these, these concerns and uh, it didn't happen. A lot of companies came at the market, they came at it in different ways and tried to to really disrupt and change the market and, and, and take advantage of, of a position and say that you don't need brokers anymore, you can just go direct uh, landlord to tenant, tenant to landlord, investor to, a, to investor in the market. And the, the availability of information is making that even easier today. So it's a real threat and concern. As clients have access to rich data sets, the role of the real estate broker has clearly changed. It used to be that it was enough to have great relationships. Today, to compete for the best business, relationships are only part of the equation. You need to be an expert in the market. You need to be an expert in the specific property type. You need to understand the client's industry and their space utilization requirements. You need to be an expert in marketing, finance, legal, and negotiations. In short, the industry has moved from what was the Lone Ranger approach to doing business to what has become a highly complex, competitive, and collaborative team sport that can only be managed effectively by employing and sharing information using excellent technology tools. So one of the, the transformative ways that we see the business changing is through the power of visualization. Now imagine a world where every property and space has been simulated, not just flat data sets, but a virtual world. You'll be able to look into your glasses or into your handheld device or set step into a room like this with all of the walls visually enabled and fully immerse yourself into an interactive space so that you could be with a colleague in Tokyo, a CEO in New York, a local branch manager in Dallas, and all be in the same space at the same time. Fully guided tours or real-time interactive experiences to walk up the, to the penthouse to take a view of the, the world around you or to look at the room and realize that you want to change things on the fly with never getting on an airplane, never getting in a car. Have full access to all the information about a property, space, market, and be able to make real estate decisions from your desktop. That is coming. These virtual worlds are being built and let me give you a glimpse of what it's going to look like just with a, a quick tour of what one of our companies is working on right now. This is a PIX property immersion experience. Avonis utilizes 3D interactive visualization with PIX, Property Immersion Experience. Through the use of state-of-the-art technology from the computer gaming industry, we enable real estate developers, brokers, and owners with raw land or developed properties to market their potential to a wider audience.
You'll see with this interface, and this is, thank you, Ellie. See in the, the back of the room, Ellie Feingold from CB, who asked us to, to do a model of their, their new incredible User world headquarters features. in LA, and we were able to, in about, uh, uh, I guess the uh, four weeks or so, put together the model, a fully interactive model that enables people to walk through the space, see where the sun is coming in, see what the impact is, you know, this beautiful the view of the Hollywood Hills, see the floor plan, move around the space. If you didn't like the layout one way, you can move furniture around, you can touch the floor and say, imagine what this would be like if this was marble instead of wood, imagine what the um, uh, you know, conference room would be like if it was all glass instead of uh, you know, broken up. The, uh, the opportunities with this technology are just incredible. And you can put, as you see in the back, there's video and you have video screens. You can pull up information and have sort of video within video of information to be shared. This is now happening uh, not just inside spaces and in buildings, but in towns and communities. This area in Boston, for example, uh, we're, we're doing a similar uh, redevelopment zone in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, where the town's looking at a change of in dramatic scale like you're doing here and to envision what that could be like to be able to walk through the new environment, look at how your views are going to change as new towers come up or how buildings interact with one another and how you can use that to attract new tenants and new businesses to the area is a change of the way economic development will be done and real estate, develop, real estate will be marketed in the future. So appreciate the, the time and the attention of this group and, and uh, Stephen for putting this program on and inviting me to, to participate. I think this is a very exciting time for the industry. It's groups like this and, and uh, teams of people like are in this room that are going to make the difference in the industry in the years to come with great ideas, building great technology, and those innovative real estate brokers, owners, and, and managers that will adopt that technology and put it into practice. So thank you very much and look forward to the rest of the program.